different to this session of uh, design patterns uh, design pattern in this session we will try to understand what is bridge pattern uh, we will go through uh, some sample source code fundamentals definitions you know so that uh, you can actually uh, visualize that how you can use bridge pattern in actual projects so the first thing in design uh, first thing in bridge pattern is that they fall into the structural pattern category you know so as said previously that you know that structural patterns are those uh, the whichever patterns lie uh, lies uh, lie into the structural pattern sections are those patterns which helps us to solve the structural uh, issues regarding software architecture bridge pattern helps us to decouple the abstraction from the implementation i hope that everyone is clear about abstraction because it's it's a very basic object oriented principle uh, abstraction means you know to only to show the necessary things about the object okay what do you mean by necessary things is for example let's say that you have a tv and then you have a remote for the tv now in remote you will see that you know uh, only the necessary functionalities are there for example rewind or uh, to say start stop change the channels make the volume up and down you know but definitely uh, the user is not exposed to that how the crt tube of the tv functions you know or uh, how is the internal what you call stabilizer in the tv or how what are the internal electronic equipments of the tv he is only concerned with that remote you know the start stop and the, the volume and the channel so the abstraction uh, from the a simple user user perspective for a tv is that remote okay okay and the implementation is nothing but your internal way working of the diodes or the electronic equipments or whatever it is you know so again i'll revise that abstraction is nothing but to show the essential uh, functionalities to the end user so if you are designing classes you know uh, one thing is very important that you should only expose the necessary features as public properties so in this way your object is not complicated so if we are able to decouple this abstraction from the implementation right and uh, if tomorrow if we change the implementation or we add new implementation it does not affect abstraction okay so tomorrow if i put a new tv model i don't need to change the remote i don't need to train the user again the user to, uh, the user will still use the same volume button the same change channel and start and stop so basically you know adding new uh, changing changing the tv doesn't change my remote in short changing my implementation doesn't change my abstraction okay. so here's a simple example which uh, we will try to uh, see that how we can uh, we'll try to make a sample source code of it you know and then you can think about how you can implement in your projects you know but uh, if you want to implement uh, you should ask yourself a question you know that uh, when when should i implement uh, uh, bridge pattern if in your project if in your project you are seeing uh, situations and scenarios where uh, basically your implementation is changing a lot okay and then your uh, you have you have created some uh, and your <coughs> i'm sorry your implementations are changing a lot you are adding new implementation etc you know and then your object which is or we can say the abstraction of the object or the design of the object then again needs to be changed again and again you know or it needs to be recompiled again and again then you should think about uh, using bridge pattern so ask yourself a question that do i need to separate the implementation from the abstraction does my implementation all uh, is my implementation so dynamic that i always need to uh, go and again uh, recompile my abstraction if yes you know then you need to use bridge pattern so here's an example of it so what I, what i've done is you know basically you can have any kind of equipment any kind of electronic equipment okay but but you know to on those electronic equipment there is the abstraction is a switch so it has on and off okay and my implementation can be a fan so i can if i need to uh what you call on a fan you know uh, if i need to start a fan i'll just say on the fan and if i need to off if i need to off the fan i'll just say off the fan so the switch is a very generalized thinking you know it will start and stop any kind of equipment like ac tv radio anything and the implementation are the actual equipments that is the fan ac and tv so tomorrow if i add a new equipment right i should be able to design a system in such a way that i don't need to change the switch so first thing as i said you know you need to separate the implementation from the abstraction so first we'll design our implementation classes so what i've done is that i have started the implementation for every equipment one is first is the refrigerator then is the bulb and in every of these implementation i have written there i have i have a start and a stop method you know and this start and a stop method can be uh, just to make it more uniform i have uh, implemented from a common interface i equipment 
Now, every of these start and stop methods have their own implementation. In the sense, you know, for example, a, a refrigerator to start, right? I need to start the compressor and start the ice cooling. But if I need to start the bulb, I just need to warm the bulb and glow the bulb. In the same way, if I need to stop a refrigerator, I just need to stop the ice cooling and then stop the compressor. If I need to stop the bulb, you know, I just need to switch off the bulb. So, implementation of uh, every of these equipments are different. So, whatever I've shown you now is the implementation. Now, let's go to the abstraction part. My abstraction is a switch. Okay. And the switch has an on and off. Okay. Now, what I'll do is that I'll, I'll take an equipment as my reference internally. So, I, what I've done, I've aggregated the equipment interface in the CLS switch. And I will just call the start and the stop. I don't know which equipment I'm, I'm, I'm starting and stopping, but my, my uh, which equipment I'm starting and stopping, but because I'm just using this common interface, I equipment, I will just start and stop any kind of equipment I want. Okay, so this is my abstraction. If you look, you know, in a very uh, granular way, you know, we were able to use this, uh, we were able to separate the abstraction because of this interface, I equipment. So, your abstraction is always pointing toward this equipment. So now, here's the actual class implementation. So create object of bulb, create object of refrigerator, create object of switch. Okay. If you want to start the bulb and stop the bulb, just pass the reference to the switch object, start and on and off. Now the refrigerator object on and off. So in this sense, my switch which is abstraction is separated from the implementation. I can just create any kind of implementation object, give it to the switch, okay, and switch will just run with the start on and off. So this is how you know uh, we have separated the abstraction from the implementation. So tomorrow, if I add a new equipment, it doesn't matter to me because uh, they all inherit from I equipment, and I have separated my abstraction and uh, implementation by using the I equipment interface. Let's go through a sample source code, the same source code which we discussed. So here's what I have, as I discussed, you know, that this is my implementation. My This is my pulp implementation, this is my refrigerator implementation. And this is my switch, you know, and in the switch, I have passed the equipment and I've started on and off. Okay, here's my program. You can see that I have first passed the bulb to the switch. Then I pass the refrigerator and just, just started the on and the off. The same for the bulb. Now, what I'll do, is if I run this program, you can see that the bulb first is warmed up, blown, and then switched off. In the same way, when I started the refrigerator, it just started the compressor, started the ice cooling, and stopped the ice cooling, and stopped the compressor. This is a very uh, a hypothetical example which I've shown, but uh, in actual projects, when we look into actual projects right uh, there are many times you know where you would like that you have some classes which are actually doing the work or we say the implementation right and then there is a, a generalized abstraction for it you know and you don't need to recompile this generalized abstraction when we talk about the general uh, generalized abstraction i mean is these are the classes or the interfaces you know which are directly referenced the ui and the ui is actually using that abstraction okay now you don't want that by adding new implementation you don't want to recompile the ui again and again you know so that is what is in practical terms when we talk about abstraction and implementation so in the sense you know if you don't want to recompile your ui again and again right and you still want to add new functionalities to to a class or object or you know a business object or something you know at that time you will definitely need uh, you you will definitely need this pattern but again ask yourself a question you know that's very important any any design pattern you read you know any uh, design pattern you read theoretically and you try to understand it but don't try to force the design pattern in a project you know uh, keep your uh, practical thinking in mind first thing you know not only theoretical ask yourself a question that is the is that the is that my uh, client ui is getting compiled again and again that is my abstraction is needs to be compiled again and again with every implementation if yes then go for this pattern so uh, any kind of uh, because we have gone through so many design patterns till now i'm sure you know uh, but you know what you can do is you can keep a list of uh, design patterns with you you know and uh, you can just also keep the list and a simple definition of it and see that you know uh, 
see that uh, you know so whenever you have an issue or a problem right you just look at the list okay it can be a simple simple page you know with one or two pages where you have listed all the design patterns and a simple definition so for example uh, when we discussed about uh, uh, bridge pattern we said okay it's it's about separating abstraction and implementation when we talk about factory patterns it's about uh, centralizing the object creation when we talk about visitor pattern it's about uh, you know adding new logics and you know not changing the data structure so uh, in this way you know keep a list of it and then uh, what you do is that you basically look at your problem and see that does it fit to the list you know and then wear that practical cap in your mind you know saying that is it necessary if yes you know then implement design then implement that pattern so that is very essential don't get carried away with it don't make your project complicated finally uh, always remember that projects the important thing is that project should be completed on time they should be designed in a proper way okay not <clears throat> they should not be learning platforms uh, learning platforms for developers and architects you know that's a very important thinking because customers put huge money on projects you know and i've seen that in big companies even in small companies big company any kind of company you know i've seen that you know that developers and architects they try uh, in uh, they try to learn something and then try to work on a project you know so just think you know how good would it be that if somebody is building a house and then he, he says that you know he is a civil engineer who is basically just learning something and trying to implement on this building you you would be definitely scared so in the same way the customer also puts lot of money okay so design which is practical think what is practical and keep that list in mind okay but again see it practical that if you can solve it in a simple way probably you don't need to implement that design pattern but if you think no that that is the best way then do it i hope i was uh, able to uh, uh, clarify the fundamentals of uh, bridge pattern and uh, if you have any kind of suggestions and uh, if you have any kind of uh, improvements for this videos you can always mail me at shivan_raskarkwaralatiyahoo.com